options separating the cousin themselves. So your first cousin once removed is the child of your first cousin. Okay, see, that's what I just told y'all, right? Uh -huh. Your second cousin once removed is the child of your second cousin. Well, what if it's a first cousin and it's six times removed? How does that relate? Okay. Just a minute. Now, ancestry is using that terminology. Okay. The term removed refers to the number of generations mm -hmm. separating their cousins. That's what I thought, too. Oh, okay. So if it was, say it was your uncle, just like, just like me with William Goins Jr. Okay. Nacogdoches, he is my fifth great uncle, so he would be my fifth great uncle. Or he'd be my great uncle five times removed. Oh. Okay, because like whenever my first cousin, which is either a child of my, my aunt or uncle from my mother or father, okay. Oh, okay, right. Then when that child has a child, that's not my second cousin. That's my right. first cousin once removed. Right. Because they're one generation from... from right. I See, I've, I've had people great, ask me great, about great. that business about removed, and I've always said that just determines the, the generation. Generations, and you're right. And I'll let it go at that. Yeah, yeah you're right. And, well, that uh, explains it. But in, still, in my mind, I can't, can't get wrap, okay. around now, it. Now, you know? your first cousin's grandchild is twice removed. Right, because it's the second okay, generation. So that, that first cousin once removed child, which is that your first cousin's Oh, grandchild, then that is your uh, uh, first cousin twice removed. Okay. I see. So what you're going to have to do, now who is it you said? How many times? Six uh, times. From, first cousin, six times removed. From, That's six from me to Isaac Ryan. Okay. So Isaac Ryan was the first cousin of who in your family? His great great grandfather or grandmother. Well, or whoever. Goins. Okay, so Isaac Ryan and Seraphia are going to were first, first cousins. cousins. First cousins. Okay. That's right. Well then when they had a child, see, and then okay, to where it gets down to you. So how many other generations that is, where y'all share those same set of grandparents above them. Hmm. Okay. So in other words, Isaac Ryan and Seraphia Drake had a set of grandparents in common. Yes. Okay, so they were first. That, well, no, their parents would have had to have been the brother, sister, or whatever. Is that, is that how it is? Yeah, that's right. Serafina Drake and uh, Jeremiah. Ja Jacob Ryan. Jeremiah. No, I know about Serafina oh, Drake. Okay. Now, we're talking about the cousin thing here. You oh, said okay. Jacob Ryan and Serafina Drake mm -hmm. is how y'all's, is what makes you kin to him. Yeah, okay. Okay. So what was their relationship? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Oh, okay. Because that, that's what you have to do, is you have to look at, at what? what that original set of people's thing was and then go down those generations. Right. But if it now, was... Isaac Ryan was a brother-in-law of Thomas Rigmaiden. Yeah. And his uh, his sister, Eliza, married Rigmaiden. And then... His son, I can't remember the son's name, was the one that's always was sending the letters back and forth to Furman about red bones and what yes. have you, the red bone letters. Uh, letters. Yes, right. I gave okay, you a full set of those. Two. The Rig Maiden Diaries? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I've read all of those. <laughs> yeah, it's I a job to read all of them. Yeah. Oh, and you know, that's where he mentions the Pascal Goins, the Jonathan Goins. He mentions, I think it's Jesse Ashworth, I believe, that comes and spends a lot of time. Well, he talks now. about them all. I mean, I got yeah. so much information out of that. He's oh, talking yeah. about so and so was coming down to help him uh, uh, process some meat. And, yeah. Wow. And he said, Well, you know uh, what they would do there is one family would like butcher yes. something and they would share because they didn't have good refrigerator. You know, they didn't have good ways to preserve all this stuff. Mm. Sure. So, and then maybe the next time the next family would do it and, and they then would share. share right. Meat. That's right. Yeah. I thought that was, that was really cool. I mean, you really needed your neighbors then. You oh, really absolutely. Your neighbors. You were dependent on your neighbors. 
in, in a lot of regards. Well, you didn't have them stealing your hubcaps. I mean, you know. Or your cattle. Or your cattle. <laughs> <laughs> No, if they did that, they went on out a little further away. Yeah, they could do that right well, and tell us, tell us, Gabe, about this story about um, Aaron Juan Drakey. Oh, yeah. The, uh, Serafina. This is your grandmother's sister. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Serafina and uh, a number of her brothers and sisters. We're so on a years. trip from uh, Calcasieu into uh, Orcasita, Orcaquisac, Orcaquisac, which had to have been a Mexican, at that time a Spanish checkpoint, into Texas. And that was where they got stopped. Now, along with them in that group, was Charles Salier, mm -hmm. which yeah, uh, yeah. ended up being the guy that uh, they say that found Saint uh, or Lake Charles. Lake Charles, yeah. Uh, although there are other people that they claim founded that, like uh, the Ryans and Doctor yeah. Sibley yeah. and yeah. the uh, Doctor Sibley. Yeah, Dr. and the uh, Rib they, all, they were all working together. Yeah, so they they were all the Ryans yeah, had they, a uh, lumber mill. Charles Lake was named. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, the Ryans had a, a lumber in, mill in uh, Lake Charles. Well, there's a lake in Lake Charles. And the Rigmates ended up having lake. a hotel. And there is an intersection there in uh, uh, Lake Charles called Ryan and uh, and Rigmate intersection. Yeah, Anyhow, yeah, those, records, those records those records state that uh, one. Aaron Drake, uh, senior, and Juan Aaron Drake, junior, arrived on this particular day, and all of these different people were with them, and one of them was uh, Serafina, mm -hmm. and uh, that was in 1807, and it gives her age as about four years old, I think, at that time. Wow. And that they had so many cattle, hit a cattle with them. They had so many horses with them. They had uh, uh, a uh, manservant, and I'm trying to think of what his name was. It's a uh, pretty f famous name in Louisiana history, and uh, that you see, you know, as the history goes on. Pompey and, Factor. Huh? Pompey Factor. Oh, I don't remember now. You have to give me that document. Let me see it. Okay. I, I, know, know, I, I think I have it. a copy of this. I don't remember. I don't know that right. I've seen it. Tell them what you know. Tell them, I'm, tell I'm them trying to think doing. of who it was that translated all of that. We met her. Up yeah, in, we did. I remember. Damn. I can't remember her name. I might remember her name. Just give me a minute. I'll think it up. I've got it. I've got it in my book mm -hmm. and everything. I've got all that in the book. And uh, but if you're just glossing through those records, you miss this one Aaron Drake. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just doesn't leap out at you. Yeah. And where it was actually John Aaron Drake. Right. But that was the Spanish. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, well, anyhow, they turned back apparently after a year or several months. You know. And they mention other people that came along with them that didn't uh, comport themselves in a proper manner. So they told them to hit the road, Jack, and sent them back to Louisiana. And uh, it's got the list of those people as well. But there's a whole list of people that came with them. Yeah. You know. well, I definitely what about him that. rounding up the King's Mustangs? That's oh. on that document, too. Yeah. Yeah. The... Uh, I have not found the document, and I'm beginning to wonder if that wasn't somebody's joke. And no, uh, there is a document. I think I have a copy of it. I will look really? through your file. But Are you making yourself note on all the stuff that you're... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I remember. That no, I don't have to make myself oh, okay. note, but I'll say to myself, I want thing. that document. Yeah, but old age is going to creep up. No, well, not yet. Not yet, dear. You'll, you'll be <laughs> no, confused on all of it. You'll be calling me 
L.V. Hayes was with us that day down in in uh, Sykeston and, and all that stuff. Oh, you remember all of them days, right? Oh, I'm man. sorry. Let me look under here real quick. We got a. I have a notebook. Of but they got uh, they got uh, picked up a couple of times by the Spanish troops because they were uh, uh, mustanging, you know, catching horses and taking them back into Louisiana. And I think that that's why, probably why they were asked to go back to Louisiana, because they got caught. Uh, I think the records were, um, and the guy that signed them in, the commandant at Orpikisak, uh, who signed them in, later was killed right after the Battle of the, uh, the Alamo. Uh, he was assassinated by the uh, Mexican troops. Because those guys that were once Spanish soldiers became Mexican soldiers right. and stayed in the uh, stayed in the fray over there. Sure. And uh, he was taken off and assassinated. I thought it was kind of chicken shit. You know, when I read that Woo! because I knew who he was. But uh, he won four out of five matches. Four out of five. Awesome. <laughs> They are over in Springdale, Arkansas today. So, yay for him. That's great. Mm. I'm so proud of him. He's such a good boy. So they were crossing from... Louisiana, from Calcasieu, I guess, into Texas. And, of course... Any of the wild horses that were in Texas belonged to the right. uh, the King of Spain initially, and then when Mexico took over, they became became sure. Mexican property. Sure. But at that time, they were uh, they were on uh, Spanish lands. And the other thing that uh, I dug up recently is that the battle flag at the Alamo was actually a Mexican flag. Because all of this stuff, this war between at the Alamo had to do with the revolutionary forces in Mexico or in Texas and didn't, didn't have a damn thing to do with the state of Texas when it first got started. And oh, I've, got, I've got the history yeah. on that too that'll, that's quite uh, interesting when you get right down to the nitty gritty. You know, what we've heard or what we have learned is the Davy Crockett version of what went on at the Alamo. And uh, we just assumed that these guys just appeared out of nowhere and, and populated this, uh, this garrison. Well, Isaac Ryan went in there with the uh, New Orleans Grays initially and, and took that ground. And uh, the general that was in the Alamo at the time, his name was Cos, C-O-S. And he was the brother-in-law of Santa Ana. Well, they uh, took all of their uh, guns except for whatever they was necessary, you know, from them when they captured the Alamo, and they sent them, they didn't kill everybody, they sent them marching back into Mexico. And, uh, of course, he met his brother-in-law, Santa Ana, at the border in Mexico, and, and Santa Ana was all pissed off, and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, you know, straighten all of this stuff out. Well, Santa Ana was originally a Spanish uh, soldier to begin with before he became a soldier for Mexico, right. for the Mexican government. So his idea was to, you kill everybody, you know, and then you don't have a problem with them because they're all dead. Right. You don't have to take care of them, you don't have to feed them, you don't have to worry about them rebelling, you know, so that was his his, his way of his uh, warfare. Way of, right. But the group in, in San Antonio that was at the Alamo was a group that was formed by uh, the uh, rebels uh, in Texas. And that was why that Mexican flag of 1824 was being flown at the Alamo. And it wasn't even a, a Texas Army flag. Right. I actually wondered that myself. Yeah. Why it was the same flag. Did you get to look through these two books yet? Okay, let me see. I've only done, no, I'm on my second one. Now. Okay, well, just. No, I have not done anything. Okay, so, so we did, you did. Um, be sure to go through those two. Well, I'm glad you're getting something out of that. 
I'm excited about finding the George Perkins. I know, right? I well, I have George I, Perkins, too. I, I have been wanting to find him. You know, I, I think on my uh, ancestry thing, let me see what I've got. For well, you know, if you can start laying out a timeline of where they were at different yeah. points in time around places like Texas, Louisiana, the migration from Texas to Oklahoma, perhaps, or wherever, uh, it lays out a, a more interesting story, I think. Yeah. You know, they just don't appear here. No. Sometimes that's all you've got in, in genealogy okay, is they so pop up George, at a, uh, at a George location. George Perkins, I, I, I've only got him up to 1860. Now I've got him past 1865 to 1870 because that mm -hmm. list... Is the occurrences between 1865 and 1870 when the letter was written? Mm -hmm. So I now I know he lived past 1865. <laughs> okay. And you may find even further, you know. And also too, now I know he was in Wise County. Mm -hmm. I need to look now at a map and see where Wise County. Yeah, see is what you can dig out in Wise relation County. to where the rest of our people were, because I mean we know that a bunch of them were over around the Trinity and area and like that. So where is Wise County? Because I mean, I'm not Oh, I just looked it up and now I'm Texas just... and uh, I, you know, I'm not familiar with other than Jefferson and Orange County, you know, those counties yeah. that I grew up around oh, and yeah. was into and then have gotten, and most of our people were in that area that went into Texas. But we've also got some that like went to Erath County and went to, you know, and that's my advantage of being in that Ashworth group with Verna Thompson, but she is just like one of the best researchers I've ever seen. And the thing with her is, is you can name up a name and she can sit there just out of her head. Well, oh, that was so and so, you know, da da da, you know. And, oh no, he was down in Erath County during that time. And I'm like, I've got oh. a cousin. <laughs> I've got a cousin like that. It's just unbelievable. I'm going to try and get her into genealogy. She, uh, you can give her a name and she'll give you a birthday. Wow. See, and I, I can't I mean, I really everybody can't do that. I have to go and look everybody. at my, I have to go and look at my records because I can retain a little bit of it. And especially like when I'm in a mode of where we're really working on the set of people right then, then for a little while I can recall it memory, but after a while, you know, I've kind of lost it. And I can remember a little bit of it, but I have to go look and remind myself. I've Where's a, Bridgeport, guys? Denton, Bridgeport. Denton is on the highway on 35 north of Dallas. Okay, well, it's... Um, um, or is is it Dallas, maybe? No, it's it's west. of It's over by Decatur and Bridgeport. Lake Bridgeport. Okay. Wise. In the, or what was... Yeah, Wise. W-I-S-E County. Yeah, Wise County. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's west of... of Dallas. Dallas, Denton. It's west of Denton. Okay, I need to look at that. Can I look at it? I, I'm a visual sure. person. I have to see sure, it. You can look at it. I, I really do. do. I can't just well, say, oh, okay, west of Denton. Let me move down on the map just, just okay, a little bit. Decatur, and, which the letter was sent to Decatur because okay. that was the district. Probably. Let me go in just a little bit more. So here's Dallas, and Denton is just a little bit northwest of Dallas, and so it's like right over in here. So Wise County is right. Is, is yeah, one let of me these. See if I can find a little better map. Than well, that. I think so. Let's see if we can get it where it shows the counties. Wise County, Texas, established 1856. Yeah, that's a primary town in uh, Wise County. Looked like Denton, didn't it? Let's see images. Oh, well, it's way up there. Wow, we well, see. I'm in like, what was George and what were they doing way up there? Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's got to be him because of the Joshua being there too. Yeah, right, right. And that would be probably But Jordan's if you son. look at that piece of, if you look at that, that's Austin's colony. Yeah. That's Austin colony area. Yeah, yeah. Let me show, show you, me show you what map. Austin Colony is like. That'll show on that big map that I gave you. Yeah, it, we it lays out the different colonies. 
because it's Wise County now, maybe, but it wasn't probably. Well, but then it, it's saying Wise County on that letter. Is what I'm, you know, and it said established in 1856. Well, ago when you first brought it up. What seen, year was that? In okay, well, this is 1865 to 1870. Okay, so it was it was Wise County had been uh, since 1856. Formed, so, right, but I mean that original land there mm -hmm. is falls within Austin's colony. But, and see, yeah. I wouldn't have looked for George and them up there. I mean, you know what? It would have never occurred to me. Yeah. Yeah, but see, that's a big issue. Because but see, that's what them, that's what those red bones over there on the other side of that Sabine, where it runs real deep, they will not move out from that community. They don't want to. And we have to because we're over here too. And it didn't mean that they just stayed in San Antonio or East Texas. You no. know, I'm sure that. You know, people went on like they always yeah. did. Well, see, I mean, we all, I mean, in the research that I have done, and the mode is with other Ashworth, Perkins, you know, researchers that is one of the starts in Bearhead and that area there, we tend to think that they just went right across the line over here around Beaumont. Orange and, Orange and Beaumont and, and Denton, Trinity, and Trinity Texas, and Angelina and Baby. Baby. Well, they were well, probably recruited to live in the Austin colony to begin with. That's yeah, why they yeah. ended up going that, okay. that distance. But mm -hmm. what has happened to me, like, when it, like I said, I'm in this group with Verna Thompson, and then she's coming up, well, they moved down to B County. I knew ever heard of B County. Oh no, they was over in Erath County. Oh no, you know, and we're talking about these Ashworths and Parkins. But originally it was a bigger area and then it just got smaller on them. So, so it changed, you know. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying is, is I'm thinking only around the Beaumont and Orange. You know, that's what we tend to think. I know, but these people were But then that we way. find out, hey, wait a minute, they moved way down here or way now. I'm yep. finding out, golly, George and Joshua was way up there whenever over down. here. Well, I knew they were we there. Got, you know, we I'm going to be honest that I knew they were in that area. I'll tell you why. Because um, they were in Atascocita, and that's Atascocita district. No, no, where? When were they? When were they in Atticus? Either? They're all enumerated. Thomas Nash and Anna Goins and Perkins and all of them okay. are enumerated in the Atticus Casita. Uh, several of them from Louisiana are. Okay. Um, okay. And what years was that? Um, okay. I've got all of that with me. It's um, it's gonna be around just eighteen oh nines through the early twenties. You know, right in there. Um, they came early. Okay. Surprisingly, okay. they came early. I didn't Earlier know where, than I a lot of people give them credit You had confused that momentarily with no. uh, Atascosa. Yeah, that's the same one I'm talking about. Well, Atascosa is down south of San Antonio, south of Bear County. Oh, uh, was it? Oh, yeah, Atascosa. Not Atascosa, but Atascosa. Now, that's where uh, Jeremiah finally ended up. And uh, the uh, Oakley Cemetery is just, just north of the Atascosa line. Okay, let me look here. And the real spelling quick. Is, I'll tell is you. Different. Uh, Anna Goins and Thomas Nash and Joshua Perkins and all of them were over in. Hold on one second. Now, they probably were in, in Atascosa. They were. I'm sure that's right. But, but see, I got into that. But that, but Thomas Nash and Anna Goins um, Nash are enumerated in Austin's colony. Yeah. Uh, with Benjamin James, see that's where they all come in and say, "Well, if James was really not Anna Goins' son, they wouldn't have put him as her son." Well, yeah, they would have. She was in the household as the mother. They would have just listed him. That was the way they did. It was simpler oh, just yeah. to say. That's my son, and he's being raised as a son. They weren't going to separate gonna people out. Say, oh, well, this is my uh, first or second marriage, or my illegitimate son, or this was. They're this all kid Nashes. They up, all belong to that. Kid line. we picked up off the road, you know. I mean, it, 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 they didn't did do that. that. Well, now the, the the census taker could, too could have sat there and said, "How many boys you got? How many girls you got? Yeah, okay, exactly. tell me yeah, their names and ages." Right. And never did, never looked at them and said, "Well, now you know." <laughs> See, those are the things that I ran into when I was doing enumerations and in, in, with the state of Texas. 
and as to uh, you just didn't those are human uh, studies in this modern day and time yes and yes. there's a protocol that you have to follow now very strictly right, now right. but when these people and uh, and haven't worked in that field and knowing what these uh, record takers would have had to deal with mm -hmm. they didn't have t you had people coming in there and you'd say what's your last name Paris. Well, that came out Paris, you know, sure. Paris, oh, you know, and they would spell it then P E double -R, R I C E when her name was actually P E R E Z right. or right. S, right? And uh, which happened to a, a number of our family, you know, members. And just like Goins, one guy would spell it with one G, one guy would spell it with two G's, yes. one record, you know. Yes. Even the uh, the records of uh, Emily. Uh, Goins, who was then a, a Paris at the time that she gave her deposition, the deposition was taken and it spells it one way in a deposition and she signs it another way, you know, because that was how she was taught to, sign, to her sign her name. And she didn't know the difference. Sure. And the guy that, that made the record was only going from, you know, what he well, heard. Sure. And maybe he didn't care what, what she signed. He was going to put what he heard. Sure. Yeah, sure. so you have all this shit going on. Lots you know? of dynamics. And so then know, I got a laugh right. when I hear this. Oh, they changed their names. They must have been outlaws. They didn't do shit to their name. Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> they weren't hiding from anybody. Right. right. <laughs> Jesus. It's just like this business about uh, Sir Francis Drake. You know, that's the first thing I hear. Oh, Drake, uh, were you related to Sir Francis Drake? No, you mean the pirate? And then they get all upset about it because he was a pirate. He yes. was a he was a uh, privateer. Yes. And uh, was knighted then, you know, as a knight, Sir Francis Drake. But Sir Frank Francis Drake never married, never had any issues that anybody knows about. Right. Now, he had a, a nephew that was named Sir Francis Drake right. Right. that did have issues. You know, and I've gotten into some of the damnedest arguments over that, you know, because uh, everybody, everybody thinks they're related to Sir Francis Drake. And I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, I'm related to Sir Francis well, Drake. Well, and then that's like with Nelson, and you got that Nelson that sailed around the world. What was his name? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now, yeah. they do say, though, that there is Nelson DNA all oh, the I'm world sure that they there. think came from him. Well, you know, they had a woman in every part. I bet you did. I don't doubt it. Well, see, that's the other problem with genealogy and DNA. How messed up that DNA actually could be in reality when you get right down to it. People don't think about things like that. Right. They don't think, oh, my, my, my great great grandfather would never have done anything like that. You don't know what your great great grandfather <laughs> would have done. You well, know what? Yes, he was right. going out on a Friday night raising hell and drinking beer and getting drunk. He didn't know what he was doing, partying right. and all this stuff. Sure. I mean, well, what, what do you really know I, about you? One of the accusations that has been made against me, and I was telling Stacy about this earlier, is, is that I'm taking all of our female family members and turning them into sluts. Because I'm showing where they had a child with this man and then they had a child, you know. Oh, yeah. And I'm <laughs> sorry, but in those days, whenever you married officially or married just Jump through a bond. When your husband died and you had a small child or children, you had to find another man to help support. Right, quick. And the men did the same thing. They were left with a house full of kids. They and, had to go out and work in the or do whatever. It may you. have been a brother. The brothers That's were right. That's right. That's right. Yes, exactly. It like happened that. all the time. And one exactly. thing would lead to another. Absolutely. There are many, 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 where many. A brother marries Absolutely. The widow of the or a brother. sister marries the brothers. You, you know. take you take uh, uh, John sister. Aaron Drake Jr., who was a uh, Indian mulatto, but the term mulatto was used. And my brother jumps up and says, oh, we're all black. We're mulattoes. I'm going to tell everybody to kiss my black ass. And he's just going on and on about that. And he's told everybody in the family that, that uh, we're related to, uh, to uh, blacks, that we've got all these Negroes in the family. And trying to explain that to him was like, now Harvey Morris was one that dug that up at the LSU library. 
Right. And that was apparently a big deal. It was a landmark deal, you know, that right. uh, in that library, that uh, he was an Indian mulatto. Right. And uh, that was the only way he was able to uh, marry Rosalie Abisher in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. because the Catholic Church would not marry blacks to whites in the church. Mm -hmm. So they did an investigation. Now, I don't know what the investigation entailed, uh, but uh, they were from Virginia, and a 1705 law in Virginia said that the offspring of, a, uh, of an Indian woman uh, would be termed a mulatto, and the offspring of a you know, black woman would be termed a mulatto. Right. And uh, you go back to uh, trying to think of what his mother's name was, Creeves, which a lot of people argue Chavez. I don't know that Charity, that's really Charity valid. Creeves, but, isn't it? Oh, uh, she was related. She was a Virginia Indian and claims to be related to Pocahontas. But now we're talking about, you know, there's a difference there of about 60 or 70 years. Now, she could be off of some of that family because uh, Pocahontas had one kid that eventually, you know, by John Rolfe, that eventually came back to Virginia and raised some families. And there's a line that, that goes down the... Now, I have, haven't tracked that. And I've started looking at that recently to see if I can't connect those lines up. Well, because I, I think it's important enough. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. I haven't had time to do it, but my daughter-in-law has got a thick genealogy book from her family. My daughter-in-law is Amy Bean, was her mm -hmm. last Bean. name. The Beans were mixed up with Native American. And Adelaide. she has got a thick book that her mother loaned to her and let her bring out to the house one time. And I looked through it a little bit, but I really didn't have time to get into it. But they trace them back to Pocahontas oh, There's in her family. Well, I sent you and a she's CD. Very proud of that. There's a CD over there of every one of Pocahontas's descendants. Oh, really? Well, because see, my okay. stringers mixed with our. Okay. With the oh, area, with that I group, actually, with James You were hanging out with Indians. I was hanging out with Indians. My people was hanging <laughs> and gypsies and Jews and Turks and <laughs> Portuguese adventurers and all kinds of exciting people. <laughs> My family is sometimes horrified when I say that Indians hung out with Indians. You know, they just well, can't. I mean, they I can't fathom that. that. I don't like, understand yeah. that. And I start saying, "Well, now look here. There's Mark Palmer. He's Kiowa." And uh, here's John Ross and his kids, you know, and uh, he was a uh, uh, Cherokee chief for X number of years. We married into that family. And who the hell were they supposed to hang out with, right. you know, except other Indians? Well, you know, you know what? This is going on right now because if you have um, a community that is basically pretty much all white mm -hmm. and you have a little small community of blacks there that's attached to in you know as part of that town or community and then some hispanics come into town mm -hmm. they'll gravitate and hang out with the black people yes. more, more than, than they the, do yeah the white state the white people. People. exactly yeah you know yeah. and it's just always been that way minorities will hang out with minorities that's, right that's the way it's always yeah. been yeah uh, well and i was going to remark really quick about the men men and wives and I, I was telling uh, Marilyn the other day that William Colin Gowans absolutely was married three times. And as soon as he buried one, he climbed in his wagon and went and got him another one at the funeral. Well, but it was, it was actually... Well, there were so many of them out to, there, man. He had babies at home that needed feeding, honey. You, He'd had no choice. You gals started all that by having too many women. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> now, if there had been too many men, it had been a reverse role. You know? <laughs> right. These women would have been fought over. You know? Right, but we, we couldn't vote, but we could have cute babies. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in that movie last night. <laughs> Women's suffrage. <laughs> So, yeah, um, but also I was going to remark about Kiwana Parker because you guys know I'm related to yeah. Cynthia Ann Parker. And um, now he had five or six. That little wives. whore. I, no, he had five or six wives. He's a man whore. <laughs> Cynthia Ann Parker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she had a rough, rough go of it, yeah, I'll see. Yeah, that, yeah that's really did. a very tragic and very... You know, and if you start story. and really think about that in, in reality, now they paint her as, as being a, uh, a savage, you know, an Indian and so forth. 
I mean, these people were not, uh, when they talk about these towns, that they found a town and they wiped out this Indian village, that was a city. You know, with aunts, uncles, cousins, That's you know. That's right. And we brother, talk about sisters, it so nonchalantly so that yeah. oh, we just went in there and wiped them out. Oh, yay, hooray for us. Hey, man, it's just like what happened at Fort Mims with Weatherford and the Creeks Uprising and all of that. Those were his people. Those were our people in there. They were related to every one of those Indians who slaughtered them. Yeah. But it, it there was a... There was a lot of problems for these people being mixed blood. They walked uh, two fires. They walked a white fire. They walked, no, they walked three fires. They walked a black fire because they fought and resisted slavery. Mm -hmm. They walked a white fire because they had to deal with white men's ways. And they fought the Indian fire because they weren't full blood. And I know that a lot of people say, well, they didn't think of it that way. It, and maybe not at first. But when tensions got bad between the Indians and the white people, these were the grease. These people were the grease that moved whatever happened to each side. And if they couldn't make a they treaty, the it was their that, fault. If they, they did the make a treaty, it was their one, fault. One rip, uh, west, you know, they were. Yeah. They talk about them as being uh, robbers and. Uh, Outlaws gun, and gun fighters and all this right. stuff. But if it wasn't for them, they never would have had a civilized West. No, you that's know, they right. became the sheriffs and the lawmen. And we were the and, ones that uh, went in the wilderness and opened the trails. Yeah, exactly. we were the ones, not not the white people. Yes, exactly. And this they were is why I get so angry about the history of Borgard Parish in Louisiana, mm. because when I went up to the Borgard Parish Library and read the the um, stories of each little town, when I got to the finger one, which is Bearhead area, mm -hmm. there was no mention of any of my people except one Ashworth woman, that, and, and all it said about her was is that she owned a cafe. And your James Gowen line was we were there first one way. there. First one there. Did I get you out of one of those coats? Or a my water, a coke, a diet coke, coke, water, coke. My coins and Parkins and Ashworths were there. Uh, probably, well, by 1850, they're on the census of 1850 up there in 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 Bearhead. Yeah. And uh, uh, Elizabeth uh, Parkins going, who was James's widow. I mean. It, and then there was her daughter Fanny and and Isaac Perkins. They were there at least by 1850. I think that I've I've got the church records of the Big Woods Church, which Elizabeth Perkins coins as a founding member uh, in 1827. She's on the founding member list. And then you get to I think it is 1849, and she and Jesse. I think it's Jesse and Sarah. Is that his wife's name? I, I, I'm starting to get myself mixed up here. But anyway, they removed themselves from the church because they moved. They were moving up to Bearhead, which was too oh, far goodness. to go to that church. Hmm. Because in that day and time, Big Woods was way down here by uh, by Yishu Peak, uh, down where is present-day Sulphur, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. It wasn't far from Sulphur, Louisiana. And they were moving up to Bearhead. So Elizabeth Perkins Goins and uh, J.C. Ashworth and his wife, they removed themselves from the church because they were leaving that area. Oh, what's this? Um, tell him what that is. My son-in-law, Russell Jones, makes the best pound cake. That's very good pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually, uh, I mean, it's from last Sunday now, but I mean, it's been in that baggie sealed up, so it still should be pretty good and moist and everything. Delicious. And I brought that because I, uh, Stacy and my son-in-law, Russell Jones, share the same birthday. Oh. And whenever I went online, I didn't get to go online for like way that night. And I told mm -hmm. Stacy on there, I said, well, happy birthday, Stacy, but we'll have to celebrate on Thursday. So I brought some pancake with me for her so we could celebrate her birthday. Hmm. 
But anyway, this uh, this thing with Borgard Parish, they totally ignore my people, and they go in with the white families that move there as if they're the ones who established that area. And I'm telling you, it burns me. It really does. It, does. it just burns well, it burns me, me to look in any history book. My people, because mm. you know what? If my people had moved up there. And made that place uh, habitable. Mm. What would them white people have done when they got there? Yeah. What would they have done? They couldn't do it because they weren't the first ones there. Exactly. That's why they weren't the first ones there. Well, you had a load of stuff to bring in. My God. One cart. Uh, bringing it in wasn't so bad. It's going to be having to load it back up. <laughs> <I find> that. <laughs> we'll break it down. Uh, pretty right quick. here on this list, which is where you had your paper. You had your paper right here because of uh, James and Reuben and Robert and Henry and Raven and them is also a J.R. And it says Bomar, but it's really Romar. Because back here in the index, he's Romar, which is the correct. Uh, Melissa Ashworth, who is Moses and Anna Bunch uh, Ashworth's daughter, she had a Romar ch child. She was, you know, she's the one that's been married so many times. It's like, we can't even name off all her names because we'll leave one out. Uh, and she is the one that had Robert Goins with Aaron. I mean, that is the only place else that we can find our Robert is on a census with her uh, and when she was married to um, the, I think it's the Nelsons that she was married to. She was married to a Wyndham, a Nelson, a Fark, a Romar, and a Leto. And then she had that child with, with Aaron Goins also. So that's like six different Children with six different six men. different men that she had children with. It's a lot of must have been hard, you know. You know those kind of families just drive me nuts because sometimes they'll list one kid, you know, uh, with the head of the family's name. Yeah, and they were actually uh, somebody else's child well, and she died. Yes, exactly. And uh, yeah. it gets really funky, you know, in trying to figure them out. out. Yeah. Now, one thing that I think, too, sometimes about the census is, is, okay, Robert was like, I think about 17, something like that. He was old enough to speak up and say, but I'm not a Nelson. Yeah. My name's Robert Goins. Because he's at the bottom of her list. There's her, these children listed with Nelson, and then him and Fanny Nelson is at the bottom of the list. Now, I don't know why this Fanny is down under him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and 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 we know. So now, you know, I mean, this Byron is the person who helped me figure it out. She kept going back to that and she'd say, I believe that this is your Robert. And then when we got to looking at, okay, Moses, Ashworth, and um, my goings, I mean, they were right there together here in Louisiana and we know Moses died. And uh, Anna went to Texas, and then we found out that Anna got with a Mac Williams hmm. and had a child. And see, this Ken Williams is who is also in our Ashworth mm -hmm. group. He came, and he's got documented proof that they had an Annie Ashworth for a grandmother, and that her child with this Mac Williams said. I've got a half brother, you know, half brother. He named all um, Drury and Alexis Jackson. Mm -hmm. Most of his children is his half brothers. So when Ken brought that and laid it out, because at first now James Ray was very skeptical of that. He's like, I don't know about that, you know, that Ken Williams. Now that it was the Mac Williams up here, but Ken's name is Williams, not Mac Williams. Mm -hmm. But he brought all that stuff to an Ashworth meeting. He like you read it to me yesterday, and, and it was amazing. And then on the way back home, me and James White Ray were together. I always drive him over there, and he said, "You know, I, Ken proved it to me." Yeah, he did. He said, mm -hmm. he said he is right. Yeah. And the thing about it is, though, is her son Moses went by the Ashworth name because I maybe her and Mac Williams didn't stay together very long or something. 
and went by this Ashworth name until he got like grown, and then he switched it to McWilliams. Uh, he picked up his real identity, probably, yes. you know, and said, well, wait a second, I'm going by Nashworth because my mother is, you yes. know, married to or was married to one, whatever. I've got an 84-year-old cousin that lives in Victoria that I'm going to visit when I'm down in Texas. I've been trying to give her as much attention as I can uh, because nobody else is paying any attention to her. And uh, she's a hell of a nice person and uh, has got a lot of information. Now, her mother was uh, Ethel Gabehart. Ethel apparently lived with a lot of different men and didn't marry. I don't know that she even married the last person she was with. Um, and she never had a social security card. And I've had the damnedest time trying to get Jean's uh, Chickasaw card issued. And there shouldn't be any problem with the family connections in with a Chickasaw with uh, the uh, first Chickasaw governor being related to him and, and the like. But uh, she, we found her birth certificate and her birth certificate was made out to a uh, Jean, spelled J-E-N-E, -E, uh, Juanita, Jean, uh, James, her father being a James. She never knew this. She never knew that that was what her maiden name was supposed to be, was James. But even stranger, her mother that's listed on that uh, birth certificate, her name was listed as Ethel, not Ethel, Williams. So either there were some screw-ups in the records. Now, this was an 1830 record. Uh, 1930 record, I'm sorry. And uh, she was, should have been a game heart. So now, Jean goes on through, through life. She was born at the Salvation Army. Uh, hospital in San Antonio and their records were very limited. I don't know who ended up with those records because that is no longer in, a, in effect down there. Uh, no longer there. And uh, so we started doing the research and we came up with that, you know. She says, uh, Jean tells me, she says, oh no, I'm not, I'm not a James. I said, well, that was what your father's last name was. And she says, well, I'm, uh, I can't remember the name now. It's not leaping out at me. But Ethel had been with several different men. You know, there was a Franklin. Her half-brother was named Steve Franklin. And uh, she just never married any of these guys. Well, these guys, these cousins of mine, took their father's name identification but there's nothing to, now he did, uh, Stevie had a uh, birth certificate that was issued for Franklin, but uh, Jeannie just had this, uh, this record that was issued from the Salvation Army, although the state of Texas did issue her a birth record, a, uh, a birth certificate listed in those other names. Right. But she has so damn many names listed, the mother, you know, that it's unbelievable. Right. And not ever having a social security card has been a real drawback. She just didn't believe in any of that. And she was a uh, dyed in the wool Indian, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Biddick, that was the other name that uh, Gene, Gene says, well, I was always told that I was a Biddick. Well, when she was born, Ethel called my grandmother, Jessie May, and told her, said, I'm giving the baby up for adoption. I'm not going to keep the baby. And she just threw a fit. And she says, I'm coming to San Antonio. They were living down in uh, Refugio, Refugio, Refugio. And uh, so my father and uh, Wesley, my uncle, got in a car together, borrowed a car from somebody, and they drove to San Antonio and picked the baby up. The baby was only like about a week or two old. 
Wow. And carried it back down to Refugio. Now she raised Jean until Jean was like uh, about 13 years old. And then her mother took her back for some reason. I don't know what the deal was. But uh, so I've been talking to her and I'm picking up, beginning to pick up some family history from Jean. Right. You know, she's the only one left that has got this detail about Jesse May. That and, any kind of detail she needed. Right. Yeah. And, like uh, like Marilyn's situation with her Gowan's fa uh, grandfather, his father died before he was born, and so there probably wasn't a lot of Gowan's family history that he ever grew up hearing, you know, because he went with the Ashworths and, and that. And, yeah, well, they went back over to the to, Parkins. To the Parkins, Parkins. And, yeah, Parkins, Ashworth. Yeah. I phoned her. I try to call her once a week. I need to call her this weekend. But I had uh, talked to her, her about two, two weeks ago, I guess. And I said, did you know someone that Mama May, Jesse May, had been feeding out the back door of her house that was on the run from the law? She says, no, I don't, I don't recall that. And I said, well, whoever it was used to come to her back door and... Uh, Mama May, or Jessie May, as they called her, would go out to the, the back and uh, hand food out the back door. And this guy would take it and take off back into the brush. And uh, so then last week I called her and she says, you know, I've been thinking about that. And there was a guy. And his last name was uh, Lane, L-A-N-E. I said, okay. Now that's the name that I had. And... Uh, so she was telling me where this guy lived and that he had gotten into an altercation with someone down the, uh, the road and, uh, and uh, had beat him up pretty bad, took a two by four to him and, and put him in the hospital. And the sheriff had been looking for him and, and Jesse May had been feeding him out the back door and the guy was slipping up to the house and getting food. And that they lived in a tent down in the brush, this family. And the sheriff didn't know where the tent was at, and nobody would tell him. And uh, so you begin to hear things like that. Now, they were living in a house, but prior to that, they had lived in one of these mud houses that was made out of mud bricks that was part of it was underground, and then the other half was above the ground you right. know, and all that kind of stuff. And then they graduated into a full-blown house, you know, that was above ground right. and uh, that you could crawl underneath it, you know, right. and the like. And, uh, but I'm getting all of this information from Jean and she's, she's given me, you know, I'll ask her something, she'll think about it and then she'll come back. That's and, wonderful. And the name I had was Lane as well. Now, there was also a uh, another cousin that popped up, and her name is Peggy uh, Gabe Hart Keel, and uh, K I E L, and she's married to Lynn down in Houston, and she turned me on to uh, some people up in uh, Decatur, I think, that knew my father and grew up with my father, and. Uh, so I've been talking to this other woman as well, but Peggy has told me about a, a story about one of our Thomas family, The one of the women, got wind of their husband had been running around with another woman, and they leered, lured this woman down to the house and stabbed her to death and put her down the well. Oh my. And that my... Uh, Aunt Nedra, that's now deceased, had the knife and kept the knife, got the knife from somebody, you know. I mean, you hear some of the damnedest stories that are told. And, uh, of course, they went through the same thing that I went through, was that kids were to be seen and, and not heard, you know. And I, I didn't dare to ask anybody at the family, you know, if my father was talking to his brothers or sisters at the kitchen table, you know, and 
you know, they were always, you, you remember when this happened or that happened. And, uh, but I was not allowed and I just heard bits and pieces. And that was the same way that Peggy was. She heard bits and pieces. And she would be up at the door, you know, listening through the door to hear what was being said in the kitchen. Sure. Because we were not allowed to, you know. But my dad was telling me one time about how he had gone to school with his brother, Ari. And uh, they uh, took a twenty two rifle with them to school. And they would park it out on the front steps like the other kids did. And then what they were going to do on the way home was to hunt and see what they could kill, you know, for the house. Maybe a rabbit, sure, maybe, sure. you know, a, a whatever. Right. And so uh, my dad was pumping this bicycle and Ari was on the back of the bicycle. And they came down this road headed back to the house. And there was a uh, Hispanic family that used to throw rocks at them. And Ari had had just about enough of it. And here's Ari balancing himself on the back of this bicycle, raises that 22 rifle up and shoots this kid's hat right off his head. Uh, well, Ari was always known as to be a crack shot. Right. And uh, so when they got home, they knew they were going to catch him. Right. And... Uh, they put the rifle up, and they, you know, everybody got quiet. Nothing was said. And uh, a little later on, here comes the sheriff down the road. Goes in there and confronts my uh, grandfather, uh, Papa Joe, and uh, about what the kids had done. And they thought they were going to get their tail ends whipped, you know. Right. And uh, but they, for some reason, didn't uh, didn't get into trouble that night. And I was also told stories about how my uh, grandfather, Papa Joe, used to, uh, I don't think he ran a still, but from what I've been able to tell, he was a bootlegger. He had the stuff, you know, uh, bootleggers, that where that uh, term came from, where they would carry these little uh, small bottles of whiskey around in their boots, and they would sell that. And they referred to them as bootleggers. Right. <laughs> and uh, so he would have uh, all of these jugs of whiskey or moonshine out there behind the barn or wherever they put them or whatever. And from where they lived, they could see people coming from a long way off. Sure. And whatever the, uh, they saw the sheriff or the revenue agent coming, the kids would run and get the liquor and run out into the brush with it and hide it. Hide it. And uh, so my dad participated in that. Right. You know? So I used to hear some really, really cool stories, I thought. You know, Absolutely. About what my family was really up to. Up you know? to. Yeah. I was telling Marilyn last night that there's a story of um, God Nash, uh, the revenuers, come through and caught him with the steel out in the woods and granny was in the garden and they come up they busted his steel up and brought him up and we're going to take him to fort arkansas because at that time that was the federal deal they mm -hmm. had to go to fort arkansas and um granny was out there hoeing her garden and they had brought the evidence and set it up there on their vehicle granny run out of the garden and bashed all of those evidence jars of moonshine up and she said there you can't take him now you don't have any evidence and they turned him loose <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have no evidence against him they had to have the evidence you know so they were absolutely uh spitfires you know i mean they were thinking on their feet they were um those, outsmarting the smart guys those were simpler times <clears throat> I've heard stories about how they would go down to so and so's house, you know, on certain times of the year. I don't know, whenever they got into it, you know, the, the kids or cousins would get together, mm -hmm. turn over an outhouse. Yes. Nobody got in trouble for Cow that. tipping. But you turn over an outhouse today. Right. You know, oh. if you could find one. Yeah. You know, and you're going to prison, you know. <laughs> you're going to serve 20 years for. Yes. <laughs> Tip it Lord over. You if there was a child in the outhouse. Oh, my goodness. You know, it would be right. child endangerment, you know. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but those things went on without uh, 
any trouble at all. Yeah, yeah. And there were stories about, and, and all this is still hush-hush. I'm still trying to put the pieces together so I have a, a concept or an understanding of what the hell they were talking about. Yeah. That uh, one member of the family killed another guy outside the family. And then the cousins got together and they went and got the body and they buried the body out somewhere in Oklahoma, you know. And everybody was just, you know, real quiet about that. And uh, I could not get the full story, you know. I'm getting little pieces of it. Yeah. And these little pieces are only what these Fragment. cousins heard or know, Fragment you know, that they heard. It. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Here's and, uh, well, and, and that's same with our history of our people. Mm -hmm. Because it was a little bit of a secret, you know, uh, that we didn't want to be known as mixed blood people because, you know, so a lot of our heritage and a lot of our culture was lost because this or that might be considered something not politically correct for that era. Yep, exactly right. And you're just, we're doing it still to this day. Mm -hmm. We make certain things politically correct at certain times. It's like when my mother whooped my tail with a belt or a broom handle yep. or a garden hose or whatever they could find, because she would tell me occasionally. Now, Black I'll, water. Whatever. Now, you do that now. There was no, nothing well, ever this, said about it then. Look at this athlete that they got that they're raking over the coals and taking all of his money from him and everything because he used a switch on one of his kids because the kid had been told not to do something and uh, he used a switch. Well, that evolved into a, a tree limb. Right. Or first and a branch a log, and then a, right. then a Now it's a log. He's blogging him with a log, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that's what I'm saying, you know. That's how we change our culture and and, and we keep secrets and we say, oh, don't say that, um, you know, because somebody might not think that's proper and uh, that stigmatizes the people. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all you get later on is little bits and pieces about who the red bone people really were. You know, they were good about keeping those secrets. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. see, my dad apparently... And looking back on the family now and talking to different members of the family before they passed away, before they died, and I wish that I had made a uh, concerted effort to make a trip to those people mm. in Victoria where I could sit down and mm. talk to that aunt in, aunt in depth right. about what she saw when she was growing up because it would have been a lot. It's just like uh, Nancy Alzina's two twins. Uh, Alma and Alpha. Well, I found out from my Aunt uh, Nedra that they referred to them as Aunt Monkey and Aunt Fatty, you know. <laughs> and, and how would you know that, except well, that look, she was still to tell the story yeah, of it, right? If you look at the two in the older pictures, one of them is, is tall and thin and it kind of resembles a monkey in the face, you know. <laughs> and the other one was short and squat, you know. Right, right. They're heavy set, and they were twins. Yes. And uh, Alma and Alpha, Aunt Fatty and Aunt Monkey. Right. And that was the way that they referred to uh, these two ladies, right? Well, and it's the same goes for uh, my dad, uh, my God Nash, Granny, Granny, and God Nash. Granny Goins, when his girls, because they had a house full of girls and just one boy that survived, the youngest, uh, Sambo, but there's another, his name is Guy as well. But um, Guy gave all of his girls a nickname, and it was boy name. Hmm. So I grew up with all of these aunts, great aunts hmm. named Bill and Bob and Joe, but they were really Maxine and Lily and, you know, like this. And he named my father Pod when he was born, P-O-D. And, and nobody really knows why. Maybe the Peapods were coming on. You know, who knows? I don't know. Um, 
But now you go to Angelina County and you say Carl Stringer and they just kind of look at you like, you say, you know, Pod. And they'll say, oh, Pod. You know, they don't know him by his real name. They only know him by Pod. My dad's name was uh, Joseph, or Joe, not Joseph, Joe Willard. <clears throat> and they referred to him as Joe Willie. And they also referred to him as Junebug. Because he used to like to catch June bugs when he was little and play with these June bugs. <clears throat> so it's it's funny some of these names that have if been if you want to use my printer, you can. Okay. I it's think been it's developed. This book. Because this corner over here. See, I changed ink because I thought I was getting Yeah, and yeah, it's the darkness. Over. But you're welcome to use mine's got a little bit bigger top on it. You well, you're not gonna it. hurt those books if you push them down, you know, if you can well, I, I, know, now, I haven't had trouble until I got to these pages here, and then all of a sudden I'm not getting the list. A little further into the book where it's thicker. How there. did you all feel about that breakfast this morning? Was that, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for breakfast. That one in Collinsville is what I had based all this on. And they've got bacon, and they've got this huge...